In this tutorial, we'll quickly see how displacement mapping and bump mapping work. We'll also see how they enable us to save time while working in 3D. With displacement mapping, the geometry actually deforms, whereas with bump mapping, the geometry is giving off the illusion of being affected. The benefit of bump mapping is that it requires less geometry, but the disadvantage is that we can't get too close to our object. With displacement mapping, since the geometry is actually affected by the displacement map, we're able to come as close to the object as we want. However, the disadvantage of this is that it requires more geometry. Displacement mapping and bump mapping both use grayscale maps. On the map, let's say that black areas have a value of 0, which means the object isn't affected. Let's also say that white areas have a value of 255, which means the object is entirely affected. Gray areas will have a value in between 0 and 255, and depending on that value, that's how much our object is affected. Basically, this means darker equals less obvious, brighter equals more obvious. If used rightly, both displacement mapping and bump mapping can save a lot of time. For example, take our wooden floor from earlier. If we were to model each individual plank of wood, it would take some time and add unnecessary geometry to our scene. Instead, we can create a bump map and give the illusion of a wooden floor. Also, say we wanted to create an ocean. Well, we could obviously turn to advanced fluid simulation features in our 3D software package or extra plugins. This would take a lot of time to do and would be extremely long to render. Instead, we can create a displacement map and achieve pretty impressive results.